Good morning guys, <coughs> Anjini Kumar here, dealing power system 2 for Tordier Electrical students. In the last session, we discussed about, we started SAG calculations, right? And uh, we derived the equation for SAG for a two unequal, two equal height of a transmission towers and uh, what is the SAG? So when two unequal height of transmission towers, so we already derived that uh, equations. Right? I'll remind you once again. The SAG. So when two equal towers present. So what is the SAG? SAG is equal to W L square by 8D. Right? So the W is nothing but weight of the conductor. Per unit length. Always we'll take it as a per unit length. So with that, uh, but suppose the transmission line length is very, very large now. It's very difficult to find out through the length calculation. So I need to take it as a per unit length. Each and everything will go for a per unit length. Alright. And L is nothing but length of transmission line or a span, whatever it may be. Alright. P is nothing but tension. In the transmission line, T is nothing but tension present in the transmission line. Right? You know what are the factors that are going to be affected in the transmission line? Sag. So how the sag is affected means sag is directly proportional to weight of the conductor. Sag is directly proportional to length of the transmission line, and sag is inversely proportional to the tension present in the transmission system. So we already derived the equation and we satisfied all these conditions uh, while calculating the SAG value for equal tower. Right? So in order to calculate the SAG, so the towers is going to be very predominant towards, right? Between the, so with the help of towers only you have to uh, uh, put your transmission line, right? So the tower, with the help of towers, so you have to calculate the SAGs, right? For an equal height of the towers, we discussed about what is a SAG and what are the conditions that you get, right? For SAG, when two unequal towers present, present, right? Equal towers present. You already derived the equation. So what is that equation? First, you have to calculate the SAG value. So, what is the SAG? There are unequal heights means two heights will be presented. So, one height is like hill areas, right? One one tower will be in uh, lowest part um, after lowest part, and another is a top of the hill. So, definitely there will be a, a tower height distance will be present. So, in that situation, what is the SAG values, right? So that W1 x1 square by 2t s2 is equal to w x2 square by 2t right so from here we derive that what is x1 l by 2 th by wl and x2 is equal to l by 2 plus th by wl so calculate the x1 value from this equation, calculate the x2 value from this equation and substitute here, you will get the what the value of sax, right? You know what is the height? H is nothing but difference, height difference. W, you know, height of the conductor. L is nothing but length. After that, what is x1? Yes, x1 is nothing but from one supporter to midpoint O. Supporter A to midpoint O distance, right? X2 means A to midpoint O. 
x2 means b2 midpoint rule right so this is the sack calculation when two unequal towers present in the system right so up to now we completed like this uh, we already derived these two equations right yeah with neat sketches and all these things so if you follow my videos definitely you will understand what the content uh, will present on the system right today we are going to know the effect of ice and wind loading on a transmission system right so what is it So what it means, the effect of wind and ice loading. So that means, till now, we covered about the, the transmission line which is having air around it. So you don't have any, uh, we don't have any uh, ice on all these things. You know, we already discussed what are the factors that affecting affects the transmission sack means. So what are the factors that affects the sag means are different to the location of a conductor. So if the conductor located in a cool areas, like in a cool areas, like snow falling areas, if the transmission towers, that means transmission line present on that areas, definitely the ice will be present. That definitely the ice will be surrounded by the conductor. So we need to consider while calculating the, the sag value of the transmission system. So that means, so in Canada, Norway, you know that there are uh, snow falling areas, right? If you build a transmission line over there, definitely there will be a ice surrounded by the conductor. So that means the sag will be affected, but affected with that uh, weight, uh, with that ice loading on the system. So we need to calculate how much weight, how much uh, ice loading is present in the system, right? The wind pressure also will be there. So with that, uh, my sag is going to be varies. So now we'll discuss about what is that um, wind and ice loading on the transmission lines. We'll discuss now. Now if we consider So this is a conductor which is having a diameter D, right? So we have a ice surrounded by this, right? So this is a ice surrounded by the conductor like you know snow falling areas, right? So the thickness of the ice is nothing but, thick. so thickness of ice is nothing but so total diameter is nothing but d plus 2t i hope it's clear so this is a conductor it's a front view of a conductor so this is a conductor so which is having a diameter d right so there will be ice surrounded by the conductor so what is the thickness of ice this is nothing but ice so this is a conductor right so ice surrounded by the conductor definitely what happened the weight will weight of the conductor will be increases right if the weight of the conductor increases the sag will be changed because the sag is directly proportional to weight so if the weight of the conductor increases your sag also increases so how much the sag will be increases what type of sag we'll discuss right i hope it's clear so when wind is when ice is present in the system like now there will be another force so that force is nothing but wind pressure if the wind pressure but suppose this is a conductor right so there will be a wind pressure always perpendicular to this one right wind pressure right so with the help of wind pressure existing on the press existing on the conductor definitely the conductor starts swinging 
isn't it when the when the pressure interact on the surface of the conductor definitely the conductor starts moving that means conductor starts swinging so definitely if the conductor starts swinging there will be a change in sag right so we have a two types of loads present on the system so first one is ice present on the system and wind pressure is present on the system so when ice present on the system so what happened the conductor around the conductor the ice will be present so with that ice the weight of the conductor will increases so due to that weight of the conductor definitely the sag will be varies and one more stress is there if the wind pressure attain on the conductor definitely conductor starts swinging so if the conductor starts swinging your sag also varies that means the wind pressure always vertical direction you you know that wind is always vertical direction right so you don't have any parallel direction so wind wind is vertical direction that means perpendicular direction. you don't have any perpendicular so see that's not that's not that's not the matter so wind always vertical direction now what about ice loading if the ice loading is present in the system so what is the weight of the system weight is increases so the sag will be the force will attain downwards right weight increase and then go emo to the conductor downwards move to the due to the um, wind pressure the conductor starts moving vertical direction now if you draw the diagram itself you will see so how the wind direction so wind so wind weight a direction untadi so this is the direction for wind weight right after that so this is the direction for when ice is present in the system so weight of the conductor plus weight of the ice right now we'll see the resultant so this is your actual weight of the transmission system so total weight right so with some an angle the angle is nothing but theta right so this is the weight due to ice loading and this is the weight due to air present in the system so wind force right so the resultant the total net weight will be this is a net weight that we can call it as a w t right so w plus w i so what it means so weight due to i slowly w is nothing but weight of the conductor you should consider w w so what is the w w weight at wind wind loading or wind pressure on the system right half to that what is the w t the total weight of the conductor when conductor when two forces acting so what are the forces wind and air right now one more time i'll explain so always wind force will act on the vertical direction you will see that uh, conductor this one anko wind force ela untadi ila vastu untadi leda ila vastu untadi right so if you take a uh, ice loading on the system so what happen conductor weight ela untadi downwards horizontal ga padipotha untadi so the conductor weight w plus w y w i in the horizontal direction and w w is a vertical direction so the resultant net weight will be w t then how you can calculate w t so what is w t the total weight how you can calculate the square root of w plus w i whole square plus w w whole square right you know a plus b square root of a square plus b square right so net weight is nothing but uh, this is due to ice loading and this is due to air surrounded by the conductor itself right now you have to define each and every weight individually right now we derive the formulas each and every formula one by one 
clearly understand so if the prop if the problem is given like that you have to solve with this uh, uh, with this formula itself right so what is a w so w is nothing but so weight of the conductor per unit length and one more formula conductor density into volume per unit length right so the weight of the conductor directly given you have to substitute that uh, weight value in a, in a formula in a in, in a problem if if they won't uh, directly given if, if they given like uh, the density of a conductor is this one and the volume of the conductor is this one then you have to calculate the weight of the conductor by producting of density and volume so with this uh, you have to calculate the what is the weight of the conductor actual weight of the conductor so these are the different different numericals uh, if you want to solve different different numericals you have to follow these procedures you have to follow this these type of formulas right so what is the first formula w so w is nothing but weight of the conductor per unit length right if directly given so weight of the conductor you have to substitute w is the weight of the conductor per unit length if you won't given like this if they given like a, what this is the density of a conductor and what is the volume of a conductor then you have to calculate it calculate what is the weight of the conductor so then you have to substitute w value over there over here w value over next you have to calculate the weight of the ice so what is the weight of the ice Sim similarly so w i means weight of the ice per unit length right so you have to calculate weight of the ice directly given the weight of the ice per unit length you directly substitute here you can calculate the total weight of the system but uh, the examiner won't give directly so they'll give same the density of ice into same volume of ice per unit length right so the density of ice given or volume of ice per unit length given directly you have to substitute and find out the value of ice slowly so what is the volume of ice per unit length volume of ice so consider this is a cylindrical right so this is a conductor uh, this is a ice right so what is the volume of ice itself first you have to calculate the total value to total value with that conductor volume this is seven code definitely you will get um, uh, the value of uh, ice itself you will get because this is a conductor na conductor volume na id ice volume na nikeng kavala ice volume kavala you have two volumes right ice volume kavala so total volume nunchi conductor volume volume this is seven ko you will get uh, only ice volume so what is that value so density of ice into now what is the volume of ice per unit length so i already explained so volume of uh, conductor so what the volume of ice over there so first you have to calculate the uh, volume of ice so with uh, volume of ice what is the volume of ice per suppose pi r square minus what is the volume of cylindrical pi r square right so ice ki sambandhinchindi emo the pi so what is ice ice means total the total lo nunchi conductor this is one we'll get only ice right so total in the thin volume d thin thickness t thin thickness t so total which is d plus 2t so total in the d plus 2t 
by 2 whole square. This is the total. And what is the conductor pi r square and pi? So what is the conductor? D square d by 2 whole square. So the including in this is on go, you will get only i squared. So substitute here. So pi into so 4 word paka this is go pi by 4 d plus 2t whole square minus d square into 1 for a unit length per unit length you calculated this one density of ice into pi t into d plus t so what is the w this is very very important formula definitely you will get it actually these type of uh, difficulty questions they will ask if directly given what is the weight of ice per unit length you will easily calculate it but they won't given like this they will give the thickness of this one and uh, the d value so the diameter of the conductor so with that you have to calculate what is the weight of the ice so then you have to substitute weight of the ice calculate total weight right so these are the formulas so for a weight of the conductor and uh, weight of the ice now so one more formula is that i'll clear to explain one more time so what is the weight w means w is nothing but weight of the conductor per unit length if the weight of the conductor directly given no problem so they'll they will ask like this the conductor density is third volume per unit length is third so with that you have to calculate what is the weight of the conductor you have to multiply both two will calculate the weight of the conductor substitute here after that um, so weight of the ice only weight of the ice you have to find out if they directly given weight of the ice per unit length you have to calculate it this one directly substitute and get the result but they won't give directly they'll give the density of ice into volume of ice per unit length so what is the volume of ice per unit length you know that uh, the conductor is there a volume surrounded by ice volume but you require only ice total volume no nunchi conductor volume this is you will get only ice volume so what is the total volume pi pi r square cylinder right cylinder uh, volume of cylinder pi r square na pi into d plus 2t by 2 whole square this is a total volume so pi d by t d by 2 whole square this is a conductor volume i'll write it for you guys so this is total volume so this is conductor volume so total volume minus conductor volume same also niko ice volume also so that that we it right so you don't need to this is only definitely weight. so this is the formula that you have to find out uh, what is the ice weight present on the system now one more weight is there that is nothing but wind pressure so what is wind pressure and w w so what is the w w means that is nothing but the wind force per unit length right. if directly given no problem if not given you have to find out so wind pressure per unit area multiplied by projected area per unit length directly wind force each and go no problem but they will give wind pressure and projected area so you have to calculate what is wind wind weight so with this you have to calculate it right what is projected area so how you can calculate the projected area so this is very very important so this is the cross sectional area of wind you are in the cross sectional area of a conductor you are seeing so conductor tips on take so right conductor tips when wind forces on the conductor what happened this is a wind forces on a conductor Right? wind conductor may the force out the tips that means uh, surrounded tips may the wind pressure put, put on the wind pressure product and the 
conductor swing over the conductor starts moving so how the conductor starts moving means it's like a rectangular shape right conductor move avutundi kada a movement like a rectangular shape so this shape we can call it as a projected area i hope it's clear this is a conductor tips right conductor tips epudaithe wind tips ni tips ni tips me the pressure padutundo em avuthadi conductor starts moving so how the conductor starts moving means a rectangular shape the conductor start move right so the area this rectangular area we can call it as a projected area right so rectangular area means so what is the value so what is a d plus 2t per unit length na 1 area means length into width right so d plus 2t into width substitute here so directly given wind pressure you have to apply wind pressure into d plus 2t into 1 so this is one more formula to find out wind weight right and these three formulas are very very important to solve the problems like in a gate so what are the formula you know the formula of weight so weight of the conductor so weight of the conductor is density into volume per unit length and one more formula so weight weight of ice so what is the weight of the ice density is given definitely they will give the density into pi into pi t into d plus t so this is the wind so what is the weight of the wind wind pressure they will give the wind pressure into d plus 2t so these three formulas are very very important to calculate it. to calculate while solving the problems itself right definitely the resultant weight will provide some an angle right you know that resultant weight w w so this is w plus w i and what is the angle so this is total weight create as some angle so what is the angle tan theta is equal to so what is the angle W W by W plus W I. So this is a vertical angle present. Always the vertical direction lo na weight more down to the vertical direction lo more down to the right. So how much angle? So this angle, this angle is nothing but vertical angle, right? Very very important bit. Right now, what is the sag value? So you know about uh, what is the sag value? S is equal to weight total weight into L square by two t. So this is the sag value when I is floating and wind pressure present in the system. You know you have to calculate the W T. So what is the formula for W T? So what is the formula for W T? I'll write it here. So W T is equal to square root of W plus W I. Whole square plus W W whole square. So this is the formula for W T. You know W T. You know the length. You have to calculate the sag value. So this is the sag present in the system when wind and ice loading occurs. Right. So what is the vertical angle? How much angle this transmission line moves when ice and uh, wind loading present in means? What is that angle? Tan theta is equal to W W plus By W plus W I. I'll write it one more time here. So what is that vertical angle? They will directly ask what is the formula for vertical angle. So you have to substitute. So what is the tan theta is equal to W W by W plus W I. So this is a vertical angle. So what is the sag? You you know the calculated total total weight. L square by two T. So what is the W T here? Square root of W plus W I, whole square plus W W square. Right. So this sag we can call it as a slant sag. So named as a slant sag because it's it's like a slant. 
right so this is very very important bit so these three are very very important while taking the gate exams right so what is a vertical vertical uh, angle w w by w plus w l so what is a sag so total total weight you know calculate the total weight what is a slant sag so this sag we can call as a slant sag right if they won't given directly calculate the vertical sag present in the system right one more formula vertical sag because it is placing like vertical angle na so vertical angle angle lo undante definitely there will be a vertical sag so this is a theoretical formula to calculate the sag value and uh, vertical sag so one more formula is s into cos theta so when you calculate the theoretical slant sag then you have to calculate the vertical sag so what is that vertical sag s is nothing but slant sag now to calculate the cos theta you know the theta tan inverse of w w by w plus w so these three formulas is very very important so that means the first one is there will be a when wind pressure and uh, weight of the ice present in the system definitely there will be a swing in the transmission line right what is that swing that is nothing but vertical angle how much angle so that the angle is nothing but vertical angle so this angle so we can call it as a vertical angle so what is that angle w w by w plus w l right now you know wt total weight of the transmission you can calculate the sag na so this sag we can call it as a slant sag by theoretical approach right but so this sag is this but this transmission line is starts moving so it create a vertical sag itself so that sag we can call as practical sag so while seeing the transmission line wind force and uh, uh, ice loading present in the system your sag starts moving right so that sag we can call it as a vertical sag so what is the formula for vertical sag s into cos theta so they last directly the slant sag directly go to the formula you have to substitute this one if they ask vertical sag so what is a vertical sag you have to calculate the s value then calculate the cos theta value then substitute you will get the vertical sag so these are the three basic important formulas all the formulas are very important while doing the problems in wind and ice loading definitely you will get a question in a gate they won't directly ask they won't directly give what is w w w t w i so you have to calculate w w w w w i all these things substitute w t from that you have to calculate the slant sag if they ask vertical sag you have to follow the steps to calculate the vertical sag on the all these things right so this is about today's session so in this session we discussed about so how the effect of wind and ice uh, loading on the transmission conductor not the transmission line so definitely the wind pressure wind pressure wind pressure on the conductor definitely the conductor starts moving swinging conductor how much weight and when ice is present in the system there will be a weight gain how much weight that it has what is the total weight so with that uh, what is a slant sag with that what is a vertical sag so these are the things that we discussed in the next session we'll do uh, one or two problems so with that uh, we conclude the sag and tension calculations in a transmission system so so if you have any doubts regarding this uh, concept you feel free to contact me so definitely i'll be i'll ready to explain you guys whatever uh, the doubts that you have definitely i'll clarify thank you very much